The Mercedes GLE Coupe is a luxury SUV coupe that revels in its role as an opinion divider. Like its key rival BMW Z6, this car delivers most of what you get in a large plush SUV in a more stylish, extrovert and sporting package that will bring new buyers to the brand. If something works, then you should first copy it and then improve upon it. Take the rather curious, contradictory idea of a luxury SUV coupe. BMW introduced it with their X6 model in 2007 and sold so many that Mercedes couldn't help noticing the need for something similar. Something like this, their GLE coupe. In truth, the three-pointed star didn't need much persuading to do this car. The company has a much older ownership profile than rival BMW or Audi brands and needs to change that image, not only with more dynamic A, CLA or GLA class models lower down in the range, but also with its larger luxury cars. Creating this GLE coupe offered a perfect opportunity to do that and target well-heeled 30 or 40-something folk wanting something that you'd never see in a Saga holidays brochure. Something like this? Perhaps. If you'd like a sports car but need a large SUV and you want something that's fashion conscious and stylish, well then Miss Mercedes aims to satisfy. It's certainly an arresting thing to look at, as extrovert, powerful and in your face as a car of this kind needs to be. Yet there's perhaps a dash of maturity here too that the rival BMW X6 maybe doesn't quite have. Enough to also perfectly position this GLE Coupe against other fresh arrivals in the luxury SUV Coupe segment, like Jaguar's F-Pace and Maserati's Levante. That certainly was the plan when the Stuttgart maker launched this car here in the spring of 2015, complete with a whole portfolio of technology that included a dynamic select handling control system, a freshly developed nine-speed auto gearbox, airmatic suspension and four-matic permanent four-wheel drive. On paper then, all the ingredients are in place here to take Mercedes into new markets, broadening the mark's appeal to include buyers who previously might have bought into a younger, more aspirational brand. Does it all add up? Let's find out. We'd understand if you happen to be struggling to imagine what a luxury SUV that's also trying to be a sports coupe might be like to drive. We wondered too. And then we wondered some more once we'd looked closely at the underpinnings of this car. The platform, you see, isn't quite as cutting edge as the panelwork, borrowed as it is from the brand's standard GLE large luxury SUV, which, if you didn't know, is the Stuttgart company's competitor to cars like BMW's X5. If you need bringing up to date with Mercedes naming conventions, that GLE model is a lightly facelifted version of the old Mark III M-Class, a design that dates back to 2011. In other words, this coupe must lug around the platform and steelwork of a vehicle that not only predates the current trend for super lightweight construction, but which also was originally designed to tug horse boxes around rather than to potentially tackle the Nürburgring. You might very reasonably think that all that rather hobbles this GLE coupe from the very start as any kind of really sporting machine. To be fair, this car has unique bodywork that not only makes it lower, leaner, longer and wider than its more conventional GLE stablemate, but has also allowed the designers to engineer in a wider track for sportier handling, or at least that's the idea. Sure enough, throw the car into a series of corners at moderate speed and it certainly handles far better than anything this high and heavy ever should. Sure, there's not much feedback from steering that doesn't really live up to its sports direct steer branded tag. What's more important though is you get surprising agility with decent front end grip, well contained body roll and strong traction from the standard 4MATIC four wheel drive system. Push a bit harder and this car carries its enormous 2.2 tonne curb weight with rather more difficulty as the suspension and stability control struggle to contain this SUV's substantial bulk. Quite how much difficulty we're talking about here depends a little on the engine you choose. 
The entry level version uses a 3 litre V6 diesel developing 258 brake horsepower. It's a gutsy unit too with 620 newton metres of torque that takes you to 62 miles an hour in 7 seconds en route to 140 miles an hour and can help you tow up to 3,500 kilograms. If we're honest though, we don't really think this variant is the one to have if you're to really experience what a GLA Coupe has to offer, which is why we've chosen here to try the version we think that potential buyers should focus on, the 367 brake horsepower V6 by Turbo 450 AMG petrol model. There are a number of reasons for this. First, there are small but significant improvements in the way this petrol model can deal with the issues I mentioned earlier when it comes to coping with tight, twisty turns at speed. For a start, it's 80 kilograms lighter than the diesel version and has a rear-based 4060 Torx bit rather than the 350D's 5050 setup. That'll give you more responsive feedback than you get in the diesel and lead to a little more cornering confidence should you, rather unwisely, be attempting to treat this Mercedes as the true sports coupe that its advertising proclaims it to be. You can build on that too by adding into your GLE 450 AMG model the extra cost sports package that buyers of the diesel version can't get. This option giving you Mercedes active curve system with roll stabilisation. We'd really want that active curve setup on this car because it uh, better allows you to make the most of the key standard dynamic features that are fitted right across the GLE QP range. Specifically, we're talking here of the Airmatic air suspension system that offers integral adaptive damping working through the various modes of the Dynamic Select Handling Control System. Now, you're probably familiar with the kind of thing Dynamic Select represents. It's one of those setups that enables you to alter the steering, the throttle response, and the gear shift timings of your car via various driving modes that in this case, thanks to the adaptive damping, also alter ride quality too. You access them via this rotary dial at the base of the center console. With the diesel model, there are four settings. Sport sharpens things up nicely, while comfort allows the air suspension to smooth away the worst urban potholes, although still in a rather firmly orientated manner. There's a slippery mode option for icy weather or light off road work, and an individual setting that claims to be able to allow you to individually alter different parameters, although in practice it's slightly limiting in that it doesn't allow you to separate steering and suspension adjustment. Petrol Power GLE Coupes add an extra Sport Plus option that we think you really just have to have on this car as it introduces a popping, crackling engine overrun sound that suits this model's extrovert attitude. Plus, you get a lovely screen on that central display that visualizes longitudinal and lateral acceleration along with a steering handle in a brilliantly detailed graphic. Anyway, I was talking about the benefits of adding the active curve feature to this whole package, and they are considerable. Twist the dynamic select dial to its comfort setting, and active stabilizers soak up bumpy surface undulations much better than the airmatic suspension otherwise would on its own. Those stabilizers reduce body roll too, considerably so when you switch into one of the two sport modes, and it makes a big difference. To be frank, you'd want that kind of capability in a car that's as fast and heavy as this GLE 450 AMG. There's 520 newton meters of torque that cuts in from just 1500 RPM to hurl you towards the horizon with surprising vigor. The 62 miles an hour mark flashing by in 5.7 seconds and the car itself needing to be artificially restrained at 155 miles an hour. That acceleration time demands quick use of the steering wheel gear shift paddles provided by the freshly developed 9G Tronic Plus Auto gearbox that's standard fit on the two mainstream GLE Coupe models. This transmission isn't, though, deemed to be sufficiently sharp and swift to suit the top version of this car, the exotic Mercedes-AMG GLE 63S model. Here you get a 7-speed AMG SpeedShift Plus 7G Tronic Auto gearbox capable of rifle crack changes that'll fully exercise that substantial chunk of AMG real estate that lies beneath the bonnet. It's a 585 brake horsepower V8 by turbo petrol engine with, wait for it, 760 newton meters of torque on tap. And to be honest, I'm still trying to process that last figure. After all, a Lamborghini Aventador can only rustle up 690 newton meters of pulling power. The result is that in this Merc that it's got a massive amount of performance instantly on demand. 
The spec sheet tells me that this top variant will accelerate to 62 miles an hour in just 4.2 seconds, but that doesn't even come close to telling you how rapid this car would feel in the real world. It's supercar quick, more rapid than, say, an Aston Martin V8 Vantage would be when it comes to overtaking something. Plus, it also makes a very nice noise. I should finish by talking about four-wheel drive, Mercedes' capable formatic setup non-negotiable across the range. As you expect, it's not a system designed for mud plugging, and you can't enhance the package in the way you could do on a normal GLE model by specifying an optional off-road package that would add in a low-range gearbox. Still, the formatic system you do get here should be fine for the old muddy car park or icy driveway. A firm field would be accessible too, although the tarmac tyres and relatively low ground clearance mean that attempting anything more would be very unwise. For the record though, Mercedes quotes the base diesel version to be capable of a 19.1 degree approach angle, a 21 degree departure angle, a 16.2 degree uh, breakover angle and up to 500 millimetres of wading depth. Test any of that out though and you'd be braver than we would be in a car that's worth this much. For too long, the Mercedes brand has lacked emotion and sensuality, producing cars you could admire, but not necessarily desire. From the beginning though, 130 years ago, it was never like that. In its early years, the company established by Carl Benz and Gottlieb Daimler made machines that in equal measure reflected the character of its founders. Benz was a more rational one, but Daimler was a man driven by his passion. A man who would have understood immediately what this GLE Coupe model is all about. It's true that the world doesn't need a car as big, brash and extrovert as this. But it's also very clear from growing sales in this segment that an increasing number of our planet's better healed inhabitants would certainly like one. Sure, it'll dramatically divide opinion wherever you park it, but as an extreme expression of stylish sporting practicality, there's really not much else that comes close. Up close and personal, you're certainly given that feeling. Standing over 1.7 metres tall, 2 metres wide and almost 5 metres in length, this car dwarfs almost everything else on the road. And were it to be bearing down behind you in your rear view mirror, you'd scuttle over double quick. These huge gaping air intakes emphasise the upright single louvered sports grille that's framed by three dimensionally designed all LED headlamps. Above, the forward sloping bonnet with its typical Mercedes power domes aims to characterise this car as one of the brand's sporting models rather than just another of its SUVs. From the side, the shape is even more arresting, with the muscular wings and high belt line of a classic sporting GT somehow blended with the large wheel arches and generous ground clearance of an SUV. The wheels themselves are simply enormous, available in a 22-inch size that's bigger than anything Mercedes has previously used. The rising character crease connects them, working with this more sharply defined upper swage line to add a sense of purpose to a profile that dips dramatically over the rear C-pillar. At the rear, the designers have replicated the style of Mercedes' exotic S-Class Coupe, with this slim chrome band sitting over three-dimensional uh, rear light clusters and a registration plate incorporated into the rear bumper. The way this rear window is rounded off at the top references a look that for generations has characterised large Mercedes Coupe models. This feature incongruously blended with SUV touches like the underride guard that sits down here alongside the twin tailpipe exhaust system. Time to take a seat behind the wheel. Now here, much less effort has been made to differentiate this car from its standard, practically orientated, conventional GLE model stablemate. So the dashboard architecture and the control layout is much the same. Still, to try and make up for that, the development team sweated over the details. So the superbly comfortable, commandingly mounted sports seats get AMG bolsters in Napa leather. Plus there are sports pedals finished in brushed stainless steel and the steering wheel is a smaller stitched AMG item with a supercar style flattened bottom rim and tactile gear shift paddle shifters. Through it you glimpse a pair of deeply cowled dials separated by the colour multi-information display that Mercedes uses on most of its other models. 
Another feature that will be familiar for buyers used to other luxury cars from this brand is this 8-inch Command Online colour infotainment screen, which looks like a detachable touchscreen tablet. In fact, its functionality is primarily controlled by what at first glance looks as though it might be the auto gear stick. That's actually a stalk off the steering column. Instead, this rather futuristic looking protuberance has been borrowed from the C-Class and actually works rather well once you get used to it. There's the usual rotary controller dial that swivels and slides and pushes, but here Mercedes has gone a step further. This higher surface turning out to be a touchpad that permits letters, numbers and special characters to be handwritten, although in this right-hand drive model there's the awkwardness of doing that with your left hand. As for the command screen and its functionality, well, for us, that's one of the nicest things about this car. With sophisticated graphics that make those of every other rival system look dull and cheap, particularly nice are the vehicle sections that give you G-force and steering angle displays in real time, and a beautifully crafted screen with extra virtual dials for temperature, torque and voltage. There's all the usual infotainment stuff too, of course, with 3D mapping, live traffic information, use of Mercedes-Benz apps and in-car internet access for things like Facebook and web radio. In addition, the package provides Linguatronic voice control, a 10 gigabyte music register, plus access to news and weather reports. And the screen also displays the impressive optional 360 degree camera system that most buyers will want. So the technology is in place, as is most of the premium quality you'd expect from a luxury SUV of this price. Well, no, you don't get the exquisite attention to detail you get in an S-Class, but specified correctly, it can feel very high-end indeed, especially if you pay extra for stitched quilted leather of the plusher Designio line models or the piano black lacquered finishes we've got here. This is a treatment that nicely sets off this slatted storage area cover at the base of the centre console. It slides back to reveal two cup holders that on plusher Designio line models will even cool or warm your drinks. Other practical touches include a decently sized glove box um, and space for your sunglasses above the windscreen. Plus there are spacious door pockets and this twin lidded leather topped stowage box between the seats inside which you'll find the connections for all manner of media connectivity. <coughs> All well and good. Where you might be expecting problems, though, is when it comes to a seat in the rear. Now, as with every other car in the coupe SUV segment, that sloping rear roof line has to tell somewhere. And sure enough, really tall folk will have to duck a little as they enter. Once inside, though, we can't see too many issues. Yes, a third centre-seated person won't be especially comfortable, but since this is supposed to be a coupe, we can't see too many likely buyers objecting to that. Thanks to the widest rear bench in the class, a trio of kids will certainly be fine, especially in a model like this one, optioned up to include Mercedes's extra-cost entertainment package, which uh, includes these two 8-inch colour seatback-mounted screens that connect through to the web, a DVD player and a TV tuner. We want to get a car like this one with the premium pack panoramic glass roof fitted. This feature lightening what would otherwise be a rather dark space. Time to take a look out back and raise the standard electrically operated tailgate. Now, the first thing you notice is a simply huge luggage lip over which you must lug anything you want to carry. If those carriage items are of the four-legged variety, then that is going to be a problem if you want to keep the immaculately contoured sills free from scrabbled scratch marks. Still, get beyond that and the news is mostly good. One of the biggest advantages that this car has over its BMW X6 arch rival is that it offers you around 15% more boot space. The 650 litre total only 40 litres less than you get in the conventionally boxy standard GLE model. It's also a massive 161 litres bigger than the room provided by the Range Rover Sport. Part of this total is provided by this useful underfloor compartment into which you can stow away items you might want to keep out of the sight of prying eyes. 
However, we'd point out this space exists only because Mercedes declines to provide this car with any kind of spare wheel, not even one of the space-saving variety. Amazingly, you can't even add one in as an option on the two mainstream models, which means that in the event of a puncture, you'll be stuck with a tyre repair kit or you'll have to wait for the rescue services. It's a state of affairs that we think is unacceptable in any kind of SUV. That aside though, we're impressed by this car's emphasis on practicality. After all, you can flatten this backrest and free up to as much as 1,720 litres, nearly 200 litres more than the X6 can provide. It simply isn't what you'd expect from any car claiming to be a coupe. You've to find a model for model premium of around £4,400 over a standard Mercedes GLE if you're to own this more stylish coupe version. That means GLE coupe pricing that sits primarily in the £60,000 to £72,000 bracket, or at least it does in the mainstream lineup. You can pay nearly £100,000 for this car if you opt for the top 585 brake horsepower Mercedes AMG 63S version and add in a few well chosen extras. Most buyers, though, will be looking at the two more conventional models. The 258 brake horsepower GLA 350D diesel offers an entry point into the range, and there's a premium of just over £2,000 to pay if you want to upgrade from that variant into the potent V6 bi-turbo 367 brake horsepower GLE 450 AMG petrol model that we've been trying here. Whichever version you prefer, automatic transmission, airmatic air suspension with adaptive damping and 4-matic four four-wheel drive all come as part of the deal, as does the Dynamic Select handling control system. With the two standard models, there's the option of a plusher Designio line trim package for a premium of around £9,000. And rivals? Well, Jaguar's F-Pace has entered this market with pricing that's quite similar to that of this Mercedes once you equalise equipment levels. The most obvious direct competitor to this car, though, is, of course, the BMW X6 that inspired it in the first place. In diesel form, the GLE 350D version of this coupe, at first glance, appears to be around £9,000 pricier than a directly comparable X6 3.0-litre D model with exactly the same power output. Potential buyers need to look a little closer, though, to get a true value picture you'd have to add a considerable number of extra cost features to an X6 to match this GLE Coupe standard spec. Things like a more sophisticated suspension setup, uh, adaptive damping, a body styling kit, uh, LED headlights and a self-parking setup. Once you've got all of that on an X6, you can forget any significant price saving over this Mercedes. If your interest is centred around the V6-powered GLE 450 AMG petrol variant, then you'll find it priced pretty comparably with a V8-powered X650i model that offers a little more power but a little less efficiency. The choice is yours. As the top Mercedes-AMG GLE 63S, well, unless you're looking at something like Maserati's entrance in the sector, the Levante, the obvious rival is BMW's X6M. The Mercedes costs around £3,000 more than its Munich model alternative, but at this level, that fact will be as irrelevant as the BMW's small advantage in efficiency. Can other brands offer a realistic alternative to this car? Well, not really. There are obviously plenty of premium, large luxury SUVs around that you could consider, but these are really better thought of as rivals for a conventional Mercedes GLE rather than this coupe version. We will make an exception, though, for sportier examples of the breed, like uh, Porsche's Cayenne and the Range Rover Sport. Now, these are both cars that potential buyers of this Mercedes might conceivably have on their radars. Go for a base diesel Range Rover Sport or Pokia petrol KN models and you'll need to find much the same kind of money as you would for a comparable and better specified GLE Coupe. Yes, a base KN diesel would save you around £10,000 over an equivalent GLE Coupe 350D, but then, as with an X6, equipment level caveats would then apply. If, having considered all of this, you conclude that it is a GLE Coupe that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how 
generous Mercedes has been with the standard spec? And the answer to that is that, well, uh, you should find this car to be as well equipped as the asking prices would lead you to expect. Now, I've already mentioned some of the key items that come as standard. Uh, you'd expect four-wheel drive, an auto gearbox, and a dynamic select style vehicle dynamic system from a car like this. But features like LED headlamps, an active parking assist system with reversing camera, a body kit, air suspension, and adaptive dampers would normally be expensive options. Not here, though. To this tally, the base AMG line trim level also adds 21-inch AMG alloy wheels, privacy glass, auto headlamps and wipers, an easy pack powered tailgate, an alarm and a sports direct steer system that offers speed sensitive power assistance. Inside there's Nappa leather trim with brushed aluminium fascia finishing, thermatic climate control, special ambient lighting, an AMG sports steering wheel, electrically powered heated seats, Bluetooth phone connectivity and an eight speaker DAB stereo system. I go for the petrol powered GLA 450 AMG model and you also get a rear spoiler, a sports exhaust system and an extra Sport Plus mode on the Dynamic Select Drive Dynamic system. Whatever your choice of engine, the price also includes the Mercedes Command Online system with media interface and touchpad, accessible via an 8-inch colour infotainment screen. Now this gives you an HDD hard disk navigation system with 3D display to which you can send routes compiled on your home PC via Google Maps. The command setup also gives you live traffic information, uh, use of Mercedes-Benz apps and in-car internet access for things like Facebook and web radio. Plus, the package provides Lingvatronic voice control, a 10 gigabyte music register, access to news and weather reports and connectivity for SD cards, USB sticks, aux in items and iPods. It's a very complete specification. But with a list price approaching six figures, you would expect the top GLE 63S V8 by Turbo petrol model to improve on it, as of course it does. Here you get full AMG themed interior and exterior trim, the cockpit featuring a 4.4 inch AMG instrument cluster that lights up in red. Driving stuff includes Airmatic based AMG sport suspension, a sharper AMG Speed Shift Plus 7G Tronic automatic gearbox and a high performance braking system with red calipers. And then finally, two further features that you can incidentally also pay extra for as part of a sports package on the lesser GLE 450 AMG model. Namely, huge 22-inch wheels, the largest ever fitted to any Mercedes-AMG vehicle, and an active curve system that compensates for roll through the corners. On to options. Across the range, Mercedes offers an extra cost premium pack that gives you features like a panoramic electric glass roof, illuminated running boards, a 360 degree camera system and a memory feature for the electric seats. The two mainstream models get a further premium plus option, which sees the brand also throw in a thumping Harman Kardon Logic 7 surround sound setup and their keyless go comfort system so you can unlock and start the car without taking the key from your pocket. The ultimate choice though, if you're looking at a mainstream variant of this car, is to go the whole hog and trade up to that plusher Designio line trim level that I mentioned earlier. Yes, doing so adds around 15% to the price of your GLE Coupe, but in return, you get a more exclusive feeling car, complete with all the premium pack features I just mentioned, plus a unique interior featuring black poplar wood trim and exclusive upholstery for more supportive multi-contour climate controlled seats that have a massage function and are heated in the back. The Designio line variants also get a door closing aid, upgraded thermotronic climate control and our favourite touch, uh, temperature controlled front cup holders that keep your drinks either hot or cold. In terms of other options, well, we want to look at the glorious 14-speaker 1200-watt Bang & Olufsen Biosound AMG sound system and possibly the entertainment package with its DVD player, TV tuner and pair of 8-inch screens for rear seat passengers. Plus, of course, you can spend ages agonising over the creation of a bespoke interior, selecting between carbon fibre or piano black lacquered trim or maybe wood in poplar, ash or eucalyptus. As for the exterior, well, go for the base diesel or the top 63S model and you can add a night package of black styling tweaks. 
And on the top 63S, you can specify two further things, a carbon fiber engine cover and an AMG performance package that gives you an even rortier exhaust system, an increase in top speed to 175 miles an hour and driver training at the AMG Driving Academy. Practical options include a retractable tow bar and the usual racks for bikes, skis and snowboards. On to safety, where the standard specification across the range includes, well, an awful lot. We'll begin with the familiar stuff. That means dual stage airbags for driver and front passenger, side bags for the front seats, a pelvis bag and a knee bag for the driver, and window bags to cover all the occupants. There are also Isofix child seat fastenings, a pedestrian friendly active bonnet, and neck pro anti-whiplash head restraints. Now to try and ensure that none of this stuff is ever needed, you do of course get the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control. There's also ABS with brake assist and an adaptive braking system that flashes the brake lights in emergency stops and keeps the discs dry in wet weather. Plus there's tyre pressure monitoring, a traffic sign assist feature that pictures road signs you pass them and displays them on the dash, and a hill start assist function that stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. The standard safety tally doesn't stop there either. I could tell you about an attention assist system that profiles you in the first few minutes of every journey and then continues to measure your responses, warning you to stop for a break if control reactions suggest that you're getting a little drowsy. Then there's pre-safe technology that braces the car for a crash by tensioning the seat belts and closing the windows. Um, a crosswind assist setup that detects and compensates for sudden gusts of wind at speed. Collision prevention assist plus, which warns you if you're getting too close to the vehicle in front and will automatically reduce your speed and lightly brake if you don't respond and DSR downhill speed regulation that off-road can ease you down slippery slopes. You also get LED headlamps that turn with the corners and feature an adaptive high beam assist plus system that automatically dips them for you at night in the face of oncoming traffic. Oh, and there's an e-call emergency call system built into that command online infotainment setup that in the event of an accident will automatically call for rescue help, alerting the necessary services to your exact GPS location. That could be a lifesaver. Is it really necessary to go further? Some buyers think so, and for them, Mercedes offers its extra cost driving assistance plus package, which includes six further safety elements borrowed from the brand's larger S-Class saloon for use in this car. First up is a pre-safe plus system that will warn you of imminent rear end collisions and brake the car to reduce whiplash on impact. Next is pre-safe brake, a setup that prompts the driver to take action when the risk of a collision is detected and which can initiate autonomous emergency braking at speeds of up to 30 miles an hour. We also like the idea of BAS Plus with junction assist. That's a clever system which prompts you to brake in hazardous situations and adds extra brake pressure if you're too tentative. That also works at junctions and roundabouts to avoid possible collisions from the side. Other driving assistance plus package features include active lane keeping assist. That's there to stop dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on the highway. And active blind spot assist that at speed will stop you from dangerously pulling out to overtake in front of another driver. Cleverest of all, perhaps, is the motorway safety peace of mind that you'll get from the Distronic Plus with steer assist and stop and go pilot setup. And this is much, much more than just cruise control. It'll keep your steering straight for a start and automatically maintain a safe distance to the traffic ahead, even seamlessly stopping and starting the car should you come across a tailback. The Federal Office of Statistics reckons that a driver of Mercedes is 9.6% less likely to have an accident than the driver of a car of any other brand. And looking at what's on offer here, you can begin to see why. This car may be extreme, but its running cost returns aren't. Would we ever have imagined a few years ago that a 2.2 tonne luxury SUV of this kind would be able to virtually equal the fuel consumption of a 1.6 litre automatic Ford Focus? Almost certainly not. Yet that's exactly what this GLE Coupe model can manage in entry level 350D diesel guys. 
Contributory factors towards this showing include the sleek shape, the efficient electromechanical power steering and the usual start-stop system that cuts the engine at the lights or in traffic when you don't need it. There's also a consumption screen on the command infotainment system that shows you your recent progress and frugality. You might have noticed that the one thing I missed out from that little list was any reference to weight saving, the factor that has the biggest impact on vehicle efficiency. Uh, Mercedes will tell you that it's done what it could, but ultimately this car is what it is, based upon a standard GLE model which is itself merely a facelifted version of the brand's Mark III model M-Class SUV which dates back to 2011. In other words, the underpinnings being used here aren't as up-to-date as those of BMW's rival X6, a car which only dates back to 2014. On the weighing scales, that shows the BMW around 200 kilograms lighter than its GLE Coupe counterpart, hence the Bavarian model's efficiency advantage in base diesel form. Despite that handicap though, we don't think many prospective buyers will be too concerned by the figures that this car delivers. Indeed, as I suggested at the beginning, the most frugal 350D diesel variant could be cheaper to run than some apparently smaller cars. You're talking 40.9 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 187 grams per kilometre of CO2, which, to give you some perspective, is almost exactly the same kind of showing that you get from a base diesel Range Rover Sport. Even the bi-turbo six-cylinder the GLE 450 AMG petrol variant doesn't do too badly, thanks in part to the more efficient 9G Tronic Auto gearbox that's been fitted to mainstream models, it's able to return 31.7 miles per gallon and uh, 209 grams per kilometre of CO2, which is about 10% better than you get from a rival BMW X650i or Porsche Cayenne S. But what about the storming Mercedes AMG GLE 63S flagship version? After all, traditionally, those who bought V8 petrol powered Mercedes SUVs could hardly have offended Greenpeace more if they'd fitted a wailing harpoon gun to the bonnet. Going for the GLE 63S still won't get you a place on that organization's Christmas card list, but this variant does manage 23.7 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 278 grams per kilometre of CO2, which isn't bad for a 585 brake horsepower sporting SUV. These figures are better than you'd manage in a rival V8 supercharged Range Rover Sport, but fractionally behind the returns of BMW X6M and Porsche Cayenne turbo competitors, although not really enough to be significant. Uh, what else? Residual values. Now, that's an interesting one. Traditionally, Mercedes is strong here, but large luxury SUVs tend to lose their little more of their value than smaller models. How this one will perform will depend on whether the market continues to lust after luxury SUV coupes and inevitably how restrained you were when it came to ticking option boxes at the point of original purchase. As for insurance, well, as you might expect, the fastest Mercedes AMG 63S version is a top of the shop Group 50, but lesser GLE Coupe variants are slightly more affordable in this respect. The 350D diesel is Group 45E, and the 450 AMG petrol variant is either Group 47 or 48E. We should mention that the comprehensive three-year warranty is built upon by Mercedes Mobilo scheme, which delivers breakdown cover for up to 30 years, as long as you continue to have your car serviced at the Mercedes main dealer. And it's worth knowing that your maintenance outlay can be kept a little in check by going for the optional service care package that takes care of routine maintenance, uh, spreading the cost of regular servicing, guaranteeing the price of parts and labour for up to four services, and also covering the cost of all recommended service items, such as brake fluid, spark plugs, air filters, uh, fuel filters and screen wash. There's also an assist dashboard service indicator that monitors the engine use and tells you exactly when a garage visit's due. This is the kind of car that evokes howls of self-righteous indignation from the motoring press. They'll criticise its weight, its looks and its politically incorrect attitude before, of course, going on to fawn over some enormous luxury limousine or thirsty, dirty supercar. It's all very hypocritical. If you don't like this car, then fair enough. But don't moralise about it. Needless to say, we're not going to do that here. Will we buy one? Probably not. But we recognise that a small but significant group of buyers will absolutely love it. And having driven this car, we understand why. 
This is the kind of model Mercedes needs to make. And not only because the luxury SUV coupe market segment is an increasingly profitable one. People who will never buy this car will nonetheless see it as proof that the three-pointed star is changing into a more dynamic, more relevant and more sporting brand. And the fact that this is happening should surely concern the top brass at BMW and Audi, for ultimately that will affect their bottom line profits. As for the GLE Coupe itself, well, it's not the true sports coupe that Mercedes promises, but then no car in this sector is. There's too much size and weight on offer here for that. Weight being a particular issue for this design in comparison with its BMW X6 arch rival. Potential buyers won't care very much though. For what you do get is more what they'll be looking for anyway. Prodigious power, sumptuous luxury and real overtaking presence. True, an X6 can give you that as well. But with a Mercedes badge on the bonnet, this extreme package carries a bit more credibility. Or if it makes more sense, you'll find it easier to get away with parking it outside your company HQ. True, your CEO might still raise an amused eyebrow. But if you're the kind of very individual buyer who'll want one of these, then you probably won't mind that. For you'll be someone who shares the confidence that's apparent in every aspect of this model's makeup. In years to come, when considering this market segment, we might well forget who got there first and who tagged along. Who knows, we might even forget about SUV coupes. In the here and now, though, here's one of the very finest.